hi and welcome to the channel so today i just wanted to check in with everyone about a topic that i think about a lot which is creativity and i see this like piece of creative advice kind of circulating out there and i just wanted to challenge it a little bit or maybe play a little devil's advocate since i guess that's something i like to do so elizabeth gilbert if you've read big magic she has this theory on creativity, which I do agree with. She says that like ideas or stories are like spirits, entities of their own, and that they kind of have their own will and their own life force, which I don't disagree with. So I guess the example would be, you know, I want to tell a story or I get the idea to tell a story about like a giraffe that befriends a ghost. You know, and I'm like, wow, no one's ever done a giraffe ghost story before. That's really interesting. So Elizabeth Gilbert says, like, my job as the artist, whatever medium I use, whether I'm a writer or a painter or, you know, an actor, whatever you have, when I have this kind of concept come to me, it's my job to engage with it right away and to do the work and to kind of show up to the idea and the story and to let it unfold, to let it kind of tell me what how it wants to be. And she says that if you don't kind of show up to do the work with the story right away, um, that the idea will move on to someone else. And that, um, you know, so then like, I think even in her book, she uses an example, like she had an idea and then like, and she didn't kind of work on it. And then another writer wrote a version of a story that was super similar and then that's like how like so like the spirit the creative spirit moved on because she wasn't showing up to it and so it's like if you don't jump on that giraffe meets a ghost story right away then someone else is going to write it and then it's going to become the next new york times bestseller or the next like big hit tv show so and like the idea doesn't care who um, tells it as much as it cares that it finds someone who's willing to commit to doing the work. And I don't think that's like completely problematic or wrong, but I do feel like it's not the complete truth to me um, because I have personally had ideas for stories that I've had since 2014 and you know, eight years later, I didn't write a first draft of that idea until like 2022. And sure, I guess like I could see where in popular culture, like similar stories have been told to the one that I'm uh, working on in that particular example. But I think that there's a little bit more to the relationship between a human and a story. Even if the story is its own entity, I think some stories are ours and they're meant for our soul's growth. So like to be a little more, so like I often like to think about my ideas, my creative ideas as wine bottles. But I think that sometimes the creative process takes a really long time. Um, like years worth of time, because I believe that, yes, the creative energy is an entity, but I also feel like these stories and these themes are connected to our soul's growth and like our soul's growth is going to happen in its own time, on its own timeline. And so I feel like I'm just very much against this idea of rushing or feeling like what's, that you're gonna lose something or that like it can, disappear because you didn't act on it. I just think that that kind of feeds a certain like level of anxiety. And um, yeah, I think it just can create a sense that I need to rush. And I don't think that's helpful. And I think that that's also a little bit false because I do think what's meant for you will never pass you by. I think I I'm kind of all over the place with this, but we're all some Mercury retrograde. So, you know, I'm allowed to kind of in Gemini, Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So I'm going to be bouncing around even more than I normally do, I guess. Um, okay, the Royal Tenenbaums and Arrested Development. Uh, Mitch Hurwitz, I guess, had the idea for Arrested Development. And his concept was, I want to do a story about a dysfunctional rich family. 
And then he saw the Royal Tenenbaums and he was like, oh shit, like Wes Anderson already did it. He did the rich dysfunctional family. But Arrested Development and the Royal Tenenbaums are completely different. They're a different tone. They tell different stories. They're a different format. They kind of talk about different aspects of the rich dysfunctional family. They have different messages, different like, they, you just wouldn't even really think to compare them. And there's also that idea that like all stories have already been told. And so really for you as the artist, what you're bringing to the story is not just the ideas, but like your POV on the world and your take on that. So like your giraffe versus ghost story is going to be different from how someone else executes a story about a giraffe and a ghost meeting up and being friends, you know, you're going to have different insights into that than someone else. So yeah, I think that's kind of what, oh, so I don't know if I said the wine bottle thing already, but I do think of like creative ideas as being like wine bottles. Like I have the idea. So the idea is me like picking the grapes, like crushing them, making the bottle kind of like having the inspiration. And then sometimes I need to go put it in my subconscious mind, my basement to let it ferment, to let things happen there, to let it like kind of unfold and develop on its own terms. And I'm not actively doing anything with that idea. Um, it's just sitting in the basement of my subconscious mind kind of uh, hanging out, but something's happening there on its own that is the result of the alchemy of time passing. And so then when I like go back down to my subconscious mind, I pull that old idea back out. It looks a little different, it has a different flavor. Um, I can tell whether it needs more time in the subconscious or whether I'm ready to take it out and maybe pa start pairing it with some cheeses. That's my metaphor. I just think, so I shared this Royal Tenenbaum's Arrested Development story too, because it's like, sure, maybe these specific, sure, maybe these specific ideas, these specific stories will, you know, get told by someone else if I don't act on it right away. But I don't think... I guess my message is just, I don't think that there is any wisdom in rushing or in trying to force oneself to um, like tackle a project or an idea if the timing isn't quite right or if it's not like quite flowing or if it's not totally coming together and I think just because you have an idea and it's not initially coming together doesn't mean that like you've completely lost out on that idea and I do truly believe some ideas will wait for us you know like some creative projects will wait our whole lifetimes if they need to because the reason they've come to us is for our souls to develop so like their relationship with us isn't just like about them wanting to exist in the world like they want to be a part of our lives so that we can kind of understand their message and understand uh kind of our relationship to them on this like deeper soul level that isn't necessarily about the audience if that makes any sense it's about like the contract between the story and our souls and like what we need to do with the story to kind of retrieve those lessons for ourselves. I mean, I'm going to assume I'm making sense. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's sort of my take on creativity. And I, so I guess that's just my message. Like if you have ideas or creative projects or thoughts and you feel pressure to do it because you feel like, um, you know, like the Elizabeth Gilbert thing, like, oh, someone else is going to do it if I don't do it right this second. I think that, you know, if you don't do it and someone else does it and then you don't want to do it, maybe then it just wasn't really the right story for you to tell. And I think that if it's a story that, is connected to you on a deeper soul level. I think there's truth in the fact that no one else in the world will be able to do it justice other than you and the story has chosen you and the story will wait and be patient with you. 
because you're probably going through stuff in your actual life that pertains to the story. And I mean, that's true of like memoirs, right? It's like no one else can write your memoir because you're the one living your life. Your memoir is going to wait as long as it needs to wait for you to like be able to share it. So I think that ex that truth extends beyond mem like the topic of memoir. And I think that applies to other creative ideas as well. Um, and I think it's a case by case basis, honestly. And I do think that there is wisdom in letting some of your creative ideas sit in the wine cellar of your subconscious mind so they can ferment and like do their alchemy so that you can pull them out at the right time. Uh, that's my take. And also, yes, like that these stories get told in so many iterations, but the work of art isn't just about the ideas, but it's about your take and your tone and your POV. And that's something that's unique to you, that's irreplaceable, that can't be, um, you know, done by anyone else. So there's like, in that way, there really is no rush. There is only you and what is calling to you in this moment and what feels organic and what feels ready so it could be that you get the idea and you're ready and you just go for it and you get there but i think that um yeah i don't think that's always how it works and i don't think that means it's wrong or that you're doing anything wrong or that you're gonna lose out on anything i think what's meant for you won't pass you by and I think what's really meant for you will wait as long as it needs to wait until you're ready for it. Um, and I think some creative things are an alchemical process that require time. <laughs> uh, and so that the time passing is part of that creative process. And so I just wanted to offer that to you in case that's helpful and maybe it feels more expansive and more open and takes some of the pressure off as well. And I think as long as you're showing up to your creativity in whatever way your creativity is calling to you on a particular day, even if the way your creativity is asking you to show up to it is to like chill out and watch content on the couch, like chill out and watch someone else's creativity. I don't think there's always something so inherently negative or wrong with that. I think that it's about trusting yourself that you know what you need and what your projects need. So, yep. It's a process of developing self-trust, which I'm presently working on and I'm offering all of this stuff that I think about to you too, in case it helps and resonates. And um, I'll be back with more little gems like these. So until next time, love you. Bye.